Howdy. How's everybody out there in YouTube land today? I hope everybody's fine. I hope you're staying warm. We decided to cool down again here. We got up about 40 and then it cooled down to freezing and we got snow again. Um, spring is trying its doggone to get here, but Mother Nature is not cooperating with it. For today's project, I'm going to be burning this wolf. Actually, if you, let's see if I can get the camera down. Maybe you can see the whole thing. It's wood, wood round. This is about, oh, I don't know, two inches thick. It's got the bark around the edges of it. You can see the bark there. And I've got a pattern for a wolf and a couple wolf paws and a howling wolf down there at the bottom of it. And what we're going to be doing today is burning this, at least this top part of it, into the wood round. And try to set this so that you can see this as I as I work with it. Now I've got my my wood burner. Uh, this let me start with this project. Um, had somebody asking me to do something with wolves, and I had somebody else asking me to do a wood burning project for them. So I'm killing two birds with one stone here. And this will end up on my Etsy store when I get done with it. And I'm not sure just what all I'm going to do to it yet. But I've got to start out by getting the uh, pattern burnt into the wood. So I'm going to start today with burning this top part into the piece of wood. And um, then we'll go from there. And we'll see how this all works out. Now, you'll see that there is a knot hole in the wood down in here in it. And I thought I would just make that right on into the pattern of the wolf spur in this. Um, I'll probably be doing a little staining, maybe some painting. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. Uh, it's all part of the artistic process. So we'll just see as we go what all ends up being done to it. But we first have to get this pattern burned in. Now, I, I peeled this off. This is the peel and stick um, pattern. And it's real thin. I mean, extremely thin plastic. And you burn right through it. I mean, it, this is just like nothing to burn through. You burn through it, uh, it burns right into the wood, and then you peel off the pattern and make sure you get every little bit of it peeled off of there because if you try to stain it or paint it or seal it or anything, nothing's going to stick with that pattern on there. So we first have to burn it on. Now the tip that I'm using on my wood burner is the calligraphy tip, and you'll notice that it is a little curved on the end. And I love this tip because I can do so many things with it. You turn it in different directions to get different uh, effects out of it. It is a really nice tip to use, but when you're burning, you'll find whatever your favorites are and use them. I'll talk a little bit about the safety with a wood burner. The tip of this, all this metal down in here and the tip get extremely hot. The particular burner that I'm using, this is a, um, and you know, I never can remember the name of the doggone thing. I always have to look every doggone time. You'd think that yeah, I'd eventually get it through my thick head. Um, Walnut Hollow is what it says on there. And this one has, if I can get it up here underneath the camera, see there, it has this uh, regulator on it. It's always better to get a wood burner that has a regulator and that way you can set what you want the temperature to be. When you're burning wood, you're going to want it up toward the higher end. When you're trying to burn plastics and glass and things of that nature, you're going to want it at the lower temp on there and you can set that wherever you need it to go for whatever temperature you need it to be. If you get one that doesn't have a regulator, those are just for wood and they get really, really hot. You can't uh, get the versatility out of one of those that you can with one with a regulator on it. Never be afraid to turn your piece to get a little better angle for what you're trying to do. Every place there is a mark on that pattern, I'm going to burn right through it and into the wood. And I don't press hard. I just press down just enough to make contact and let the burner do its job. It knows what it's supposed to do. That's why it's hot. Now, if you're going to change tips on a wood burner mid-project, you're going to want a pair of pliers and a glass or a metal bowl. 
You use the pliers to unscrew the tip. Do not touch the tip. The tip is hot. Touching the tip once will break you of the habit. Once you unscrew the tip, you drop the tip into the glass or the metal bowl. You don't put it in anything plastic. Don't use Tupperware or a margarine bowl or something like that because the tip's hot and it's going to burn right through that. Safety first. Then you take your new tip in the pliers because this metal part down here on this thing is hot. So you put the new tip in the pliers and you screw it into the end of the wood, wood burner. The burner should be off when you're doing this. But this tip, this metal part down here stays hot for a while. I'm just saying, either that or you turn it off, unplug it, let it sit for a little while, let it cool down, then change your tips out. Now, I could have used the engraver on this. It would have gone so much faster had I used the engraver on it. However, not everybody can afford an engraver. The engravers are expensive. At least the good ones are. They are the same thing as a dental drill. My engraver came from a company called scmsystems.com. You can pull them up on the internet and take a look at them. I got the entire system that has the air compressor, the regulator, the muffler, the bits, the, the um, drill, and I don't know, some other extras and stuff came with it. But uh, they are pricey. It's not a toy. You can get these wood burners for under $100. The engravers cost a lot more. I can say any place that there is a line on this, I'm going to burn it. If you have to set the burner down, whoops, I'm, I'm knocking lights off here. There we go. I got a plug loose there somewhere along the line. Um, if you have to set the burner down for any reason during your project, always make sure that the tip of the burner is not touching anything. That is important because even if you've turned it off, the tip is still hot. It will burn stuff. find yourself making a big mess burning a house down or you know creating some kind of a horrible disaster be careful safety first don't take that long to heat them back up If y'all haven't seen the video that I did of the buffalo that I painted, it was like three episodes that I had to do on that buffalo, three or four. I did the, let's see, did the uh, painting of the buffalo, and then I did the painting of the background, and then I did, the, yeah, it was four. I did the uh, gold leaf, and then I did the Krylon finish and putting the, Hanger on the back of it for the fourth video. So, yeah. That was a big project for that little plaque. So you might want to go and check some of those videos out. And for anybody that might be watching this, yes, Brenda can use some view time. So if you got the bandwidth, play some of my videos. Help me out a little bit. And if you need help, you let me know and I'll play some of yours.
I've got a playlist of folks that's needing some help, and I try to keep a couple videos playing at a time for people. In the background on my computer, and that way everybody gets a little help. Keep turning it where you can get at it to burn it good. Get the right angles. Just keep working your way around it. If you see a spot that's not dark enough for you, you can go back over it again. You don't want to press hard with the bit because the wood has a grain to it. And if you press too hard, that grain will grab that the end of that bit and take it right along with the grain of the wood instead of right where you want it to go on the pattern. So you allow the heat of the, the iron to do the work you want it to do. Just lay that bit down and just let it do its thing. And if you have to drag it, you just pull it right along the line softly, not with any pressure. If you like what I'm doing, be sure you give it a thumbs up. Share it on your social media so everybody can see how to learn how to do things and be creative. If you're not subscribed to me, if you're new here, I'd really appreciate the subscription. Leave me something in the comments. Let me know you subscribed. Just keep turning it a little bit so that I can get at what I need to get at. Here are my canaries over there chirping a little bit this evening. 
So far, Fred's being quiet, and that's a good thing. He was singing earlier today. Fred's my cockatiel, in case anybody has missed that. He's a, a co-host on a lot of shows, whether I want him to be or not. This is coming along fairly quickly for all these little lines that's got to be put into it for all this fur. I've had people ask me if there is fumes that comes off of this plastic. No, this this plastic is such a fine film. There's no fumes or anything off of it. I mean, you know, you could wear a respirator or a mask or something if you wanted to when you're working it. I tend not to do that. But I was raised on a farm. Now, if I was burning plastic or something, yeah, I, I'd wear one. You don't want to be trying to breathe that mess in but I was raised on a farm and you know little smell of wood burning isn't going to bother me I mean, what do people do that have fireplaces and stuff they burn wood do they sit around with respirators on <laughs> masks because they don't want to smell the wood seriously Trying to get all this fur burnt in before I get to the eyes, and I'm just about there. Oops, let me clear some stuff off my screen here. Got notifications coming in. I like to be able to see the screen and see what my angles are is for y'all to see what you can see. In any place that it's dark you want to burn. So down here on these eyes we want to get this dark part of the eye burn in. And since the wood burner is burning dark and that dark part is dark, it's hard to see exactly what I've got going there. So when I peel the pattern off, I may have to touch it up a little bit if I didn't get everything burnt that I wanted to get burnt there. Follow me? I hope so. And if I don't leave enough of the light in the eye, I can always hit it with just a little dab of white or tan paint to bring that out.
just touching it to the pattern wherever that dark is make sure I get it burnt in good okay that was the most tedious part of the pattern was the eyes so now we're going to come right on down on this pattern Work on his nose and muzzle. Get his whiskers and everything burn in. Oop, getting off a little bit there. Wow. Wood grabbed it. Luckily, it didn't get in deep enough that I can't sand it off, but wow. What I mean, but don't press when you pull. You can press down, but don't pull when you press. If you're going to pull, you just touch it to and then drag it along light like this. <coughs> hmm, swallowed the wrong way. A little bit, come in at a different angle here. Get the bottom of this chin or bottom lip.
get the curve of that lip just right there. Okay, now we're going to do the nose. Get the nose burn in, and we'll have that piece done. Let me get these little circular places on the nostril just right on both sides. Got to make a match. Get it as symmetrical as possible. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty doggone good right there. I'm going to come in just a little bit more on the lip here. Working that up just a touch. I'm 
And I think he's looking pretty good. I'm checking to see if I've got all the lines, and it looks like I do have them on there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn off the wood burner, then unplug it. If I need to turn it back on to touch anything up, I can always do that. But I'll probably do it after I get the entire piece done. Remember, we've got the howling wolf and the two feet down here to do yet. Now, I'll do them in another episode because I don't want this one to take forever. Here. I'll just go to peeling that off. A little bit at a time. And let's see, what did I do with my pokey tool? That's not the pokey tool. I had the pokey tool out a while ago, and I don't know what I did with the pokey tool. This is close. This will do what I need it to do, I think. Take a spade, spader and get underneath it. Just keep peeling until you get it peeled off. Get down here on this lip. Get the nose. Piece there that didn't come off. Get up here and get this piece off. This piece off. The bit in there didn't come loose. Get underneath it and break it up. This is so pretty just burnt, it seems like a shame to paint it. So I may not paint it, I may just stain it. I'm thinking he might look good with some mahogany stain. And I may go around the outside of it with a different color stain, a light stain, pecan or something. Get all that pattern paper scraped off of it. You don't want to leave no pattern paper behind because stained paint, sealer, whatever is not going to stick wherever there is pattern paper left on. I don't know if I can get hold of it. Paper sticks to you like tar. Okay, got that all off of there. I'm rubbing it. Make sure I got all the pattern paper off, and it appears that I do. So there we have the top part of the wolf carved out with the wood burner. So I hope you enjoyed that part. Tomorrow we'll do the rest of it. And uh, then next week we'll figure out what we're going to do with stain or, or what have you whatever so i think we covered all the bases here if you like what i'm doing give it a thumbs up share it on your social media look me up on twitch it's 
Brenda G's Designs, all one word over on Twitch. I do shows over there too, and I do different things there than what I do here. So you never know what you're going to see me doing next. I'm also on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram, and all the URLs to all that stuff is in the description of the video for your convenience. Be sure and check out my Etsy store. I've got a lot of pretty things on there. Uh, jewelry, dream catchers, artwork, weaving things. I got my homemade goat smoke soap, the oils, all the stuff that, that I do. Um, I've got all kinds of things up there, and there's more coming on all the time. So, with all that being said, there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda. <laughs>